when I first came to Washington, I got a job with the FBI in the fingerprint department. That was when J. Edgar Hoover was, was the chief. And uh, when I went up this time to, uh, uh, to get, uh, to start working, uh, a man, <coughs> Harry McInvale from Conway, he was about uh, two years older than me, but uh, he had an apartment about three blocks from the White House. And uh, he told me, he says, one of says, uh, I've got room for somebody else up there if you want to, if you want to uh, come in and uh, batch with me. I said, uh, sounds good. So we had uh, had gotten acquainted. Well, I I knew Harry because I had his his brother was employed by me out at the sporting goods store, and uh, I knew his mother and his father, and uh, so uh, <clears throat> we, one of the first Sundays that came along, we decided, what are we going to do this morning? Well, let's go for a walk, and uh, he had a camera, we decided to take some pictures. <clears throat> we were walking down towards the White House. When we got to the avenue on the western side of the White House, we glanced up that way and saw, uh, saw uh, two cars, two limousines, and about a dozen people standing around, which was unusual. We decided, well, we'll walk up there and see what's going on. So uh, we did, got up there, and the sh chauffeur in, the, in one of the cars, they said, Bar Harbor has been bomb bombed. I said, Bar Harbor, I said, that's in Maine. It's the only one I know of. And, but after talking a little bit, and I think they had the radio on the car going, they cleared it up and said, no, that was Pearl Harbor. So uh, they, they said the Japanese ambassador and envoy were in the State Department, which was right next door to the White House. And uh, said they, they were in there talking to Cordell Hull, who was the, the uh, Secretary of State. It wasn't long before they come, both of them come walking down the steps. Harry got a good picture of them. I kept it for a long time, but I don't have it now. Or if I do, it's stacked up in some papers. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but anyhow, uh, <clears throat> they came down and, and uh, all the dozen people that were down there were newspaper reporters. And they started filing across the street going into the side entrance to the White House. Me and Harry followed right along behind them. Got up to the guard on the gate. I kind of hesitated. He said, y'all coming in? I said, no, we're not reporters. And I knew, I knew if I if I went in and got <laughs> called working for the FBI, I might get my behind fired. So I said, "No, we're not reporters." The newspapers the next day had uh, 
pictures in there, the pictures that Harry had taken were just as good or better than the ones that <laughs> the newspaper reporters had taken. So, uh, but I didn't have any effect on it. I was just a bystander. <laughs> but it was, it was something I'll never forget, I don't think. I didn't know what was what was going on, except that it, 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 that the Japanese had had uh, had bombed, and you know, being right there with the Japanese ambassador and envoy, and he had mixed feelings about. Well, uh, you ain't gonna be all right if I take a punch at him, <laughs> or, or or just stay stay back out the way. And uh, I let my better sense just take over and I didn't do anything. I uh, uh, reported for duty to, uh, I had, had been in the Naval Air Corps at, I, I washed out at Corpus Christi, Texas, and uh, I had, had been flying these biplane steermans, and when I got to Corpus Christi, uh, they put me on a fast plane. And I went out with a little red-headed ensign that uh, we got off on the wrong foot right away. He was a very foul-mouthed person. And uh, by the time we got in the, in the plane and taxis down the runway, all I could hear was curse words right on up, one thing after another. And I hadn't, it hadn't been but just a very few days since I had arrived there from Memphis. And when we got through flying, flew for about an hour, I reckon, come down, both got out. And uh, walked over to one side uh, of the plane, and he started to say, I said, wait just a minute. I says, if you open your mouth one time it, with a foul curse word, I said, I'm going to make you swallow your teeth. He said, you've got a down. I said, well, you've got the privilege to, sh to give me a down, but don't you curse me one more than I'm going to die. So uh, it went on the next day. I was called before the admiral, and the admiral come in <coughs> and uh, asked me, says, "Well, is there anything I can do for you?" And uh, I said, "Yes, sir. I left to have two weeks off to go home to my family." <laughs> he said, "You got it." <laughs> He said, anything else? I said, no, that's it. And uh, I hadn't mentioned anything at all about the, the flight instructor. I hadn't opened my mouth to anybody about that. And uh, evidently, he must have known something about it. He said, well, I'm going to recommend you for further officer training. I says, well, thank you. And, and that was it. <laughs> and uh, when I got when I got through, the, uh, I reported to uh, naval uh, recruiting station, and it was where 
no, nobody but, but seamen first class were uh, put there whenever they first joined the Navy. And it, that's where I went. And uh, I stayed there for a couple of weeks, I reckon, until they uh, told me to, to report to uh, uh, Colgate University in New York, Hamilton, New York. And uh, I went from Colgate, and that's where I got married at. I, I had written a letter to my wife back home and told her that I had good, good duty up there and uh, if she wanted to get married then, to come on up. <laughs> and uh, she did, got her sister and sister-in-law, my sister, and my mother. It was about a half a dozen from home that came up. And uh, we, uh, we got married there at, uh, at the Methodist Church at, uh, uh, at Hamilton. Or seemed to me like it was New New Hartford or New New something, but it was a suburb of Hamilton. The ladies in the church gave us the reception, and big coconut cake, you know. <laughs> and uh, I was married by Reverend Ewart. Edmund Turner, who was the pastor of the American Church of Berlin before the war. And uh, uh, after we, we uh, got married, came on back to, to Hamilton, and uh, I was transferred after I'd finished uh, probably a semester there to transfer me to uh, Cornell. That's right. Uh, that's where I, I went through about one, uh, one semester at Cornell and uh, that's where I got my commission as ensign. Hens and hens. <laughs> Wasn't long before I got my orders to report to San Francisco to uh, uh, aircraft carrier. Going to catch a ride over over to. Uh, uh, The uh, the base in, in Hawaii, and uh, that's where I got on an LST, and uh, and then we went one Okinawa was the first place we stopped at, and then went on to another one that we'd we'd go to uh, to different different places we'd. The war got over while I was at one of these schools. I don't remember now whether it was Colgate or Cornell. So, uh, Cornell. Huh? Cornell? Mm -hmm. But anyway, uh, we, didn't, we didn't fight anybody. And uh, we were just doing clean up work, going from one, from one base to another. And uh, when we come back to, uh, to uh, the base there at, at, uh, at Hawaii, 
we, uh, I had enough points to get a discharge. <laughs> and there was only one or two others on the whole ship that had enough points. <laughs> so uh, I'd already been in three years and uh, so I got in a discharge and caught a, caught a ship back to San Francisco. And uh, that was, uh, that was about the end of my war. I had had a year at Citadel and, uh, and I volunteered for the for the Naval Air Corps, and uh, they uh, sent me to, the first place they sent me was University of South Carolina. And the next place they sent me was Mercer uh, University in, in Georgia. And uh, then it's the University of Georgia in Athens. We had just like going to college, taking classes, and and uh, we would uh, have intramural sports. In fact, uh, I got a I was boxing uh, first. Before that, I had football, and. Uh, one of the fellows on the football team in, in the line, I was a quarterback, and uh, he stuck his, he kicked back and kicked me right in the my mouth. It took seven stitches right across here. And the next thing I had was boxing. And I got a big old rough looking uh, seaman the box, but he wouldn't, he said, I'm not going to hit you in the face. <laughs> I said, thank you. <laughs> it, was, uh, it, was, it was bandaged it up and everything. But anyway, uh, uh, I got a lucky punch at him one time and floored him. <laughs> but, uh, uh, after after that, uh, after I went through a, a good semester, I got my commission as a ensign, and, and then came, sent me to San Francisco to catch. I caught a uh, aircraft carrier. It was not one of the big ones. It was one of the ones they made for the war. This is a smaller aircraft carrier. That was a landing ship for tanks. And it had on the bow uh, from, the, from the deck on the bow all the way down to the water line. It had where the, the doors open like that. And with a ramp down the front. And uh, that's the way the, the, the tanks would, uh, when they hit the, the beach, they'd walk, they'd go down that ramp and they hit the beach right on. They had a uh, a captain, I believe he was uh, lieutenant commander of the ship, and uh, uh, we 
we just messed around doing well we tied up at one at one place and he brought the ship in in for remodeling the living quarters. <laughs> He got a bunch of plywood, nice looking plywood, and uh, got those fellows that were knew anything about carpentry work, put them to work in that, paneling the paneling the work quarters, and uh, we uh, well they were just killing time, and not not doing anything. Well, <laughs> I was glad to get home for one thing. I never did get up close to interview any of the Japanese that had gone through the end of the war with the atomic bomb. Uh, but I imagine that they uh, probably t took a, a bad turn for the Americans to do that to them. But uh, it turned out to be pretty good because J Japan is one of our allies now. I went to see where he dropped it. I was I was there at uh, see the ship still there on the bottom of the. I came back. Uh, my dad told me says if you uh, if you come in with me, says I'll give you uh, twenty five percent interest in the business. I said, well, if you give me 25% and let me buy 25%, I'll come in with you and give me 50%. So that's what I did. Uh, Conway Sporting Goods Company was the name of it. We had a uh, uh, full line of boats and motors, Johnson Motors, and several franchises of boats and uh, all type of sporting goods. We also had a full line of, of major appliances, Frigidaire, uh, G G General Electric, uh, Stromberg Carlson TVs. That's when TVs were first coming on the market. My friend, uh, uh, Edgerton Burris, mentioned one time that he had left to have, we were on our way to Wilmington, North Carolina, looking at a piece of property for a campground. And uh, he had left to have a, a franchise of a good outboard motor. And one thing led to another, and uh, I told him, that that if he wanted one bad enough, he could get it. <laughs> so we wound up by, I, I sold him the whole business. And uh, he stayed in the business for several months and then decided he wanted to uh, build his own building. And uh, they, uh, uh, they built their own building and and uh, I I think they included it in the Jerry Cox Company. Uh, that, uh, they were about the the biggest mercantilers in Conway, and uh, they just absorbed it into the main thing.
Keith was our first uh, child that was born. And he's, I think he's 62 years old now. And uh, Charles was the second. And Karen, my daughter, was the third one. Karen lives here in David. Married uh, uh, Tom Ligon. And uh, uh, we're We're Methodist by faith, and uh, we we'll go to Duncan United Methodist Church. I think if if you could get rid of most of the liberal Democrats, we'd have a chance. Uh, Nancy Pelosi and Harry Reid and and uh, uh, I can't remember all of them, but uh, and and the biggest one in there, Obama. Uh, I keep thinking that he's going to do something to change my mind, but but mostly he wants he wants to take what money I've got and give it to the man down there that won't do nothing but but uh, drinking <laughs> and have a big time he won't work. <laughs> so I don't believe in that. But give him everything he, he can if he's working for it. If we could get another Ronald Reagan, uh, we'd be in good shape, I think.